Right, now hopefully you're still with me after all that theory. Uh, let's get back to some slightly more exciting practical stuff. I'm going to show you a bit more about how to structure your entry in the tree view. Uh, let's start again by creating a new dictionary uh, that is uh, under the tasks menu. Uh, start a new dictionary project or file new dictionary. Uh, and this time let's create a bilingual dictionary. Just very simple, I'm going to enter English as language 1 and Dutch as language 2. And we click OK, File, Save. Right, let's just uh, do expanded view on our English to Dutch side and we're going to add a new entry. Uh, once again we're going to, so we click on new button and once again we enter dog. Then we go again to F2 and select noun as the part of speech. Um, now our hierarchy is empty. We're going to start just by adding, we right click on lemma in the tree view and we select just to add a single sense. That adds an empty sense element automatically numbered here as sense number one. Um, it'll always be sense number one even if there is only one sense. Uh, and then underneath that we could use these shortcuts, but I'm going to skip them for the moment. Underneath that we want to add a translation. Our translations are abbreviated as TE for translation equivalent. And that is always the equivalent or closest possible equivalent uh, in the target language. If we're working on the English side, that'll be Dutch. If we're working on the Dutch side, that'll be English. And we select add TE. Uh, you can see the cursor is automatically placed for us in the correct location to begin entering our TE, which I then do as font. Great, we have a simple little entry. Let's select file save to make sure our changes are saved. Note that we can also optionally, if we are also compiling a dictionary with monolingual explanations. Right click on the sense and add a new definition element to that sense. And we can then type a, in this case English, because we're on the English side. English definition for dog. And if it is a household pet, etc, etc. Um, we can also attach a usage example. Um, ordinarily, these should perhaps ideally come from a corpus. I'm just going to right click on the sense, add an example element, um, and enter a very awful, simple, made up usage example. Uh, I would venture a translation but I don't trust my Dutch skills uh, enough to do that. Right, let's add another let's add another entry to try a slightly more complex example, an entry with more than one sense to show you how we're going to go about doing that. Once again, I'm going to add we're going to add a new entry. So click on the new button. Uh, and we enter the word table and press enter or click OK. Uh, note our entry gets added to the list on the left and note that it automatically gets sorted in the correct order for us. So this is one of the things that are automatically done by TLEX. Uh, the sorting scheme itself uh, is configurable. That is a slightly more advanced topic. Uh, outside the scope of this video.
Right, um, now there are a couple of different senses of the word table in English. The first is a piece of furniture, uh, typically having four legs. Uh, and the second would be a table, as in a spreadsheet table, a grid of data. We are going to add these as two separate senses. Normally you would have the most frequently used sense first. Uh, that, that kind of information should come from the corpus. I'm going to assume it's the furniture. So we right click, add a sense element, as we did, exactly as we did before with the dog. Um, and we can enter, and here is a shortcut I didn't show you on the dog entry. There is a TE new box which we can use belonging to the sense to immediately start typing a um, translation equivalent for this particular sense. Uh, note also, I didn't enter the part of speech. We can do these things in any order, so we can go back and enter the part of speech now. Uh, let's add a definition as well. So we right click on the sense, add definition, and a piece of furniture, uh, usually with a level surface and typically with four legs. Not a very good definition, but it'll do. And our Dutch translation, and we save. Right, now we want to add another sense. How do we do this? Well, that's actually quite easy. We simply go exactly as we added the first sense. We just follow the same steps. Right click on the lemma element. Select add sense. So we always right click on the parent of the parent element in the tree view of what we want to attach something to. So we right click on the lemma to add a sense to that lemma. Click and we'll see it adds an empty sense element with the number 2. Uh, and there again we can change the order, this time we can enter um, our definition first, a grid of data such as in a spreadsheet. Also not a very good definition. Um, and then we can right click add TE to add a translation uh, list. Forgive my poor Dutch pronunciation. And there we have two different sensors. And we do file save. Uh, now if we changing the order of sensors, if we decide that Sense 2 should actually come before Sense 1 and vice versa. We can change the order of the of sensors uh, or any element in the tree view by right clicking on it um, and selecting of, from the options. Uh, you can't see them now. Let me just resize. There we go. Uh, move up or move down. So in this case, we can select Sense number 2, say move up. Now watch closely. Um, sense 2 is now Sense 1, Sense 1 is now Sense 2, the numbering has been calculated, recalculated automatically by TLEX, that is one of the features of TLEX, it automatically calculates these numbers, and as you can see on this side as well, the spreadsheet Sense is now first. Uh, you might be wondering why there's no numbers on the right, that's because the default styles are configured to simply have semicolons separating sensors. Um, there are actually advanced automatic numbering styles uh, that allow us to simply set this up in the styles. I'm quickly going to get at uh, just to show you it's a styles option. Uh, you don't have to follow how I did that, that's a topic again for a different video. Uh, but now we have the numbering in the preview area as well.
Uh, I'm just zooming in on the preview there. Um, note if you don't see so well the preview area we can zoom in and out, expand or shrink the size of the text there using these zoom in and zoom out options or the view menu zoom in and zoom out options. A few last topics for this introduction. Uh, how to delete an entry. That's fairly straightforward. Although be careful, you can't really undo this once you've saved. Or there's no, let's put it another way, there's no easy way to undo this. Um, we select the entry we want to delete. And then we can either use this delete button underneath the new button. Or lemma menu delete lemma or the little rubbish bin next to the insert new lemma plus. So we can say there, or trash can, depending on your dialect, uh, we can select the little rubbish bin, delete lemma dog, are you sure? Yes. That's deleting an entry. Right, I'm just going to save that. Um, I've showed you how to change the order of elements within an entry. Uh, note also the shortcut keys control up and control down. So we can swap sensors around just by using the control up and control down keyboard shortcuts. If you have multiple homonyms, and for purposes of demonstration, I'm just going to add another entry with the same lemma sign table. And you'll see this in the square brackets, this 1 and 2 appear. These are automatic homonym numbers that TLEX creates. Uh, so if we have two different, entirely different homonyms for table, so for example, table in English is also a verb to table an item on an agenda for a meeting. Right. Uh, if, if we have these two homonyms, we can also change the order of homonyms. So if we decided table 1 and table 2 should be swapped around. Those are also done by right clicking, but this time on the lemma, and selecting move homonym down or move homonym up. And you can see that the two homonyms have swapped order, and the numbers have automatically been recalculated. Uh, one of the fancy, very useful features of TLEX is that even if we have incoming cross-references to, um, to a particular homonym, the homonym number at the cross-reference will also automatically up. Right, let's save our work again, Control s uh, Finally, I want to show you a couple of undo options. Uh, firstly, if we're working on an entry and we are making some changes, and we decide, whoops, we've made a mess. Uh, we can use the Edit Restore option, or Control shift z or the little yellow Restore arrow yeah, on the toolbar, to restore this particular entry, the selected entry, back to the state in which we last saved it. So if we select Restore, we'll go back to the last saved version. Uh, finally, um, if we are, there's another mini undo, if we are working in attribute F1 in one of the edit boxes, and we, we can either right click undo to undo the last change typed, or press the keyboard shortcut Control Z to undo the last action. Uh, just a very useful shortcut key, if you're in Attributes F1, you can press the Tab key to jump to the next box in Attribute F1. Uh, likewise, you can, if you hold in Shift and press Tab, you will jump to the previous box. Finally, if at any time you get stuck, you can just access the Help menu and open the User Guide. Uh, Alternatively, you can also visit our FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, online, uh, which contains a number of additional tips and tricks.